and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By General Motors. At General Motors, safety isn't one thing, it's everything. By McDonald and Company, for all your investment needs. By the GM Card, the new financial vehicle. By Stroh's Draft Light, the new generation of beer for a new generation of beer drinkers. And by the M-Den. Wear what the victors wear, the Michigan Varsity Locker Room at the M-Den. It's the only game in town. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Another tough show to do. The Wisconsin Badgers on Saturday beat the Wolverines in Madison 13-10. Uh, to 10. It was not the kind of game that Coach Muller, I know you wanted to see, but I don't think there's anybody more frustrated, more upset, more down than you and your team. Well, I think that's only right, Jim. You know, we had some highs and lows, and after the Penn State game, we were very high and knowing that if we go out and execute, we're going to play pretty good football. And... Uh, for some reason, yesterday in the second half, we played much better than we did in the first half, and yet uh, we always had some obstacle to overcome that we didn't overcome. That's the thing that seems to be, I think, the watchword for this season. You guys cannot catch a break one way or the other, whether it's an official's call, whether it's a bad bounce there, kicker drops the ball, manages a 40-yard kick on a prayer really but those kinds of things seem to be compounding right but jim you got to make those things happen for your football team and and uh if you look at it any other way you become a loser because you look at then you become an if guy if this had happened and if that had happened and uh, i think we unfortunately got some bad breaks i think uh, we had our chances to win that football game but it should have never got to that extent and uh we just got to look, you know, in a situation like this, Jim, it's, it's easy in any business. You got to look at two things, what you're doing and who you're doing it with. What you're doing and who you're doing it with, you must evaluate those things. And uh, you got to come up with the right people doing the right things. And that's what the Wolverines are going to have to do. Meantime, don't go away. We'll be back to take a look at what people were doing and what they weren't doing in that game against Wisconsin on Saturday. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. Wolverines traveled to Wisconsin and of course in Madison it gets pretty wild anyway knew it was going to be a tough game opening up though the one thing you couldn't do getting the ball first you do three and out three straight passes trying to loosen things up three and out and then they get the ball back and that's not a good way to start well we had a first down Jim and then we had a penalty which uh, brought us back and we came out of the thing and then uh, we give the ball to them and you're going to see some good backs here. And Moss takes off for about a 13-yard gain. And they are good backs. But you can't have all these missed tackles. I don't care how good they are. And then you got to come up with a play once in a while. And that's what we didn't do. Jim, and the sad part is 16 plays they had the ball the first drive and 22. And then both of them ended up in field goals. And that's just too much time. Here's a good play defensively. Rakowski gets pressure on Bevel, their quarterback forces an incompletion and you force them into kicking the field goal so the defense while it bent it really didn't break that badly right. it's it's the possession time it's really hurting and and we have to get the ball back sooner and sometimes in field position but they kick a field goal again then, we, your possession you get a first down but again you don't do anything with it get hurt by penalties some drop balls they come back again and i was a little surprised that they ran the ball this this well on you early right and and, it, and in the second half they don't do it and again you got to be able to tackle at times you can put people in position you just have to make tackles and as in the indicated there you got to to uh, cover some passes but a 22 play drive and then kick a field goal which we're going to see the time hurts you jim the problem that you have is the time the good news is that you're giving them field goal, which really makes a difference. And at least we aren't giving the long touchdown. Their passing game was just a little dump pass over the middle, too. They really didn't go deep to Doremus like I thought they'd try. No, they tried it a couple times in one series right before half, which really hurt us where they went in for a field goal. Here's a pass into the end zone. Ty Law makes a great play. There's one I thought he was interfered on by the Wisconsin player, but no call. Well, I think a ball that's going to hit you right in the stomach, you ought to at least be able to get both hands on it. And uh, we would have intercepted that ball, which would have made a big difference there. They kick the field goal anyway, and it goes sick zip. This is where you start to come back and get some things going offensively. Through the air, Walter Smith. 
Right, Todd hits Waller here, and, and we had dropped three passes on a previous in the previous two possessions, which really killed us. And they were playing some heavy defenses, you'll see. Then Todd comes in, and we look underneath one area, then he throws deep to Amani Toomer and takes us down to the seven-yard line. Now, even though you've given up so much yardage and time of possession is in their favor, if you could have gotten in on this one, it would have been great, but you couldn't have to settle for a field goal. No, we had a little mix-up with the different backs and quarterback in there on, on one power sweep at the beginning of the, the first play of the series, really, that hurt us. And uh, we did have to settle for a field goal. Unfortunately, we made that. And this drive, right before half, Wisconsin starts 234 left, and this one really hurts. Right. I mean, they get a 12-yard gain, then they come back and they throw a 21-yard completion there to Doremus. We're a little bit, we're trying to play cautious, so trying to avoid a big play. Then they have a couple plays where they get out of bounds, which hurt us in a drive where we don't show. Here you lose contain on the outside and you let the quarterback out or outside the defense. We lost contain on the right side, and then the next time we come up on the very next play, we get no pressure on the right side. And then here's their touchdown again, some missed tackles here. All right, we blitz him. We should have caught him in the backfield, and as he did, he broke off, and as he breaks off, uh, he goes free because you're in man-to-man -man coverage. He goes free, you're man-to-man -man coverage. The wideouts take the cornerbacks to the sideline, and there's nobody really helping you in the middle. 13-3 uh, at half, even though they've got the big possession thing, you still got to feel like, hey, we're in the ball game even as bad as we played. Well, at halftime, Jim, we weren't in the ball game because we weren't playing with great intensity. We come out the second half and we start doing something, but the accountability for performance isn't there. Uh, you know, what, you can compare it to the Penn State situation or whatever, and we didn't put the ball in the end zone the second half, but... Uh, we were not there. We were not in the real focus in the first half, second half, then we regain it. And that, that I, I don't understand to this day. We'll uh, be back, take a look at that second half where Michigan makes a run at Wisconsin after we return from these messages. Michigan all the way. As much as Wisconsin dominated the first half, you dominated the second half, and you really got after the kids at halftime, didn't you? Well, I thought a little bit there's some issues that had to be addressed, and uh, we addressed those. But as you say, Jim, uh, here we hit uh, Walter Smith. We started on our own two-yard line, but uh, they got one first down, I think, or two first downs in three positions after having drives of 20 plays and 16 plays. And the key, attitude. Right, and the key, you talk about attitude and intensity in the second half. Thanks to what you said to him at halftime, the intensity came back. Well, I, I think so. Hopefully it had an effect here. Ricky Powers has a good run. We come back and hit Waller Smith again for 16 yards. Now, I think here, they, they call this a fumble, but I thought the ball, Ricky hit the ground and the ground caused the fumble, but the referees ruled that Wisconsin gets the ball. Well, if a ball carrier hits the ground and the ball comes out, it is not a fumble. Uh, there we had a great chance for an interception right there, Jim, over the middle. Jared Irons could have. Again, Wisconsin can't move second half. Your defense dominates early against them. Right. We go from the 2 to the 14 and don't get any points. That really hurts. Here, uh, uh, Todd comes back and hits Toomer. I thought Toomer caught the ball fairly well. Then we come back with Eddie Davis. He breaks tackles in here going up the middle. I thought Eddie, once he found uh, footing and knew what he was doing, did a good job. Great fourth down call here. Yeah, we had to go for it on fourth down. We hit Mark Burkholder over the middle, and Mark does a very good job, not only hanging on the ball, but spinning away from a couple tacklers and gets us down to the seven. Then they stiffen up, and we come back, and Todd really lays one up and over, and Derek makes a good catch. Now we're right in the football game. We've had two drives take us right down in scoring position, and we lost one opportunity on a fumble. And more importantly, your defense is playing better. Here's a sack. Right. Buster comes in with a big sack, and Buster Stanley is one of those seniors. We need more Buster Stanleys, Jim. We need more Buster Stanleys. You get the ball back, and again, you continue to move the football. Here's a nice rollout and pass down to Burkholder. Right. Todd comes back and hits Burkholder there for a big gain for about 25 yards. Now, you get a penalty on it, so it takes you back, but on third and two, Eddie Davis comes through. Right. He pops to the outside there, and uh, this is a big run by Eddie, and we get another first down, as you indicate. Then you come back, and you go to Derek Alexander. They were coming heavy with the blitz. A nice check here by Collins. Right. Throws to Derek. Derek makes a good grab. We've got to keep that a little bit away from the defender a little bit more. Now, here's the controversial play. We got no a... flag thrown on this. Looked like interference to me. Well, 
The guy just doesn't jump up and throw his arms up in the air. I mean, you know, you can make a better play than that on a football. Take a look at the replay. Does his hands get on Alexander's back? It appears so. And he makes the interception. The referee doesn't make a call. That's a huge no call in that situation with you driving toward the lead. Right. Three drives, you fumble one, you score another one, then you have a play like that, then it uh, just kills you. Defense still holds, and you come back with the football. All right, we're going to come back again, and Todd hits Amani for about 17. We bring Derek back on a reverse and pick up uh, another first down, I think about 12 yards here, and an opportunity maybe to break that one. Come right back the very next play, and we hit Eddie Davis up the middle on a running play for about 11. Nice job, and you're moving the football, and this is with like four or five minutes left to go in the game. You're going down to take the lead on a fourth and eight. You get some pressure on Collins, and Walter Smith just doesn't get the first down mark. Right, Todd does a good job there, and Walter comes up one yard short. We had to get to the 20 there, but we had a couple opportunities and plays before that we should have connected on, and uh, we failed to do that. The final 13-10, and this is our Norwegian Cruise Line play of the week. Great fourth down call, great pass, great catch, and you see Mark Burkholder get drilled but holds on to the ball, and that led to Michigan's only touchdown, and that is our Norwegian Cruise Line uh, play of the week. 13-10 loss, obviously very distressing, but I don't think that we can get away without talking about the events that happened after the game in Madison. It's making national news for people that last we heard were in hospital with critical injuries based on the crowd problem they had. And I know that's a very dangerous situation for you and almost very scary in that situation. Well, I, I, I think it's really a sad situation. Uh, you know, we haven't been up there for a few years, but to let that kind of thing go on is rather sad. Uh, you know, we even had a player, as trite as it may seem, get hit with a penny and cut his nose at the beginning of the game, which could have been an eye. You so, mean they threw a penny and it right. got hit in the nose and yeah. was cut? So, yes. And uh, so those things, Jim, to me, you gotta, you got to put a stop to those things and you, gotta, you must control them. That was happening after the game. As the game ended, they broke the fence down. Did any of your players or did you get through the middle of it? Was it happening when you were going to the dressing room because that was right, right in the path that you had to take just as we started to come out but uh those are one those are things that uh you know i, I don't like in college football obviously but i want to concern myself with the football and i want one thing known jim there were some guys out there that played extremely hard there are some guys today that hurt and we got to make sure that we get 65 guys out there that are hurting and uh, that becomes important then we become a football team but we got a lot of evaluation to do. And uh, we're not blaming anybody. We're all looking in the mirror. But we're going to come up with the best 11 guys out there at a time, and we're going to put this thing together. Some way, somehow, we will never be dead. That's the story of Michigan. Don't go away. We'll be back. Mo and I will talk about the Big Ten, the standings, who's got who, where everybody's headed. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. Saturday was a very, very big day in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, marquee games going around, a lot of contenders playing each other, and Mo, it sets up kind of funny the way things are. Penn State and Ohio State, of course, was the big marquee game, and Ohio State comes out with the victory over Penn State, and that was very big indeed. Well, I think Ohio State's got a very fine football team that uh, doesn't surprise a lot of people because they're good up front. And, Jim, they're good up front on both sides of the ball. And here Galloway catches a touchdown pass. This is when Ohio State really tried to put it away. And, again, a terrible day Saturday, rainy, cold. The Ohio State's field was very slow. And uh, Penn State complained about it but didn't do them any good. Uh, Collins throws the interception here, and Ohio State makes good on it. And, of course, Ohio State has great skilled people, but Libanote is one of them. You know, Penn State defense doesn't have the speed to run with him wide here. Here's one of the young men for Ohio State that has the outstanding speed and can get to the outside. The other thing Ohio State does, they do everything well. You don't get to where they are without doing everything well. They block a field goal attempt by Penn State, and the Nittany Lions are feeling the pressure playing Big Ten football week in, week out. Well, I, I think that's true, and then I, I also think, you know, on a play like that in those field conditions, sometimes that adds to the, the frustration. But uh, Penn State, I think, is a good football team. Ohio State's just having an exceptional year. And, Jim, we can talk about all their skill, and you can talk about our skill and the Desmonds Howards, which we're proud of, but the people up front make the difference. And, the fact and that's where they're good. Right, they got yeah. one of the greatest defensive linemen probably in the country. Right. The other thing, and John Cooper mentioned it, 
guys. One thing we've done is we've stayed healthy. They haven't gotten injured. And that's the problem you're dealing with with inside linebackers. Well, yes, inside linebackers, and then we lost a tackle, and then you lose Wheatley, and we lose uh, uh, Mealy in the game. And, and there, there's a list of injuries. But th those things, sometimes, if you're good, you can overcome. And your people must believe that you can overcome those things. Let's take a look at the Big Ten standings after Saturday's big games. Ohio State on top. Three teams at 4-1, and one, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan State, Penn State, all with two losses, Minnesota with three wins, Michigan down there at two and three. Uh, not really a surprise, although parity appears to have settled into the Big Ten. Well, I think for a couple reasons. One, you mentioned, first of all, I don't like that standing where we're at at the end, and we're going to correct that. Uh, I think the one thing, as we talk about grant and aids, and we've talked about this for five years, and everybody thinks, ho, 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 but it, finally it takes a while for that to come in. And as you indicate, the, the teams who stay healthy, it really makes a difference because they have their top players out there. And because you're so thin, uh, injuries do hurt you. And one of the things we might want to mention is that Wisconsin has the opportunity uh, not to play a Penn State. It's a break for them. But meanwhile, Michigan still has shots at Ohio State, and that's going to be a very big game at the end of the season. Meanwhile, Michigan's going to get things together against Purdue. Don't go away. We'll be back, and we'll scout the Boilermakers when Michigan Replay continues. A tradition. Now be a part of it at the M Den. From classic art and home furnishings to is in Ann Arbor, and it's a game that, well, let's face it, every game's a must game from now on, and no opponent that you have can you take lightly. No, Jim, and this is a big game for us. I mean, everybody's going to look at Purdue and look at their records, and yet I can remember going into West Lafayette last year and just escaping with a victory. And uh, this team's got some confidence that they can come in here and play against us. And they do have some players. They've had a couple problems with injuries, which have really set them back. The quarterback, Pike, was hurt, so Trefsker gets in there, and he can throw it. He's a lefty, but he can get it done. He performed very well. He came in the middle of the Wisconsin game, and they came back and uh, did some pretty good thing. Allstott's a very good fullback. You like him a lot. No, oh, he's a very good player. He got good speed. He's a tough guy. He's, he's, he's hard to bring down. And here, Ross is one of their uh, big receivers, a kid with very good talent and uh, has had some big games. They've made a change in their defensive coaching staff, but they got some players. Aaron Hall, inside linebacker, second leading tackler. Very good player. And this young man coming up here, Pat Johnson, is his finest safety, particularly a tackling safety. Watch this hit, as there is in our conference. I remember last year in West Lafayette, he was a dominant player, and he is one of the best safeties in the country. Well, he's a guy, Jim, that can hit you and turn you around, and that's saying something in open field tackling, and he's, he's a real competitor. You know, you talked top of the show. We've got to get the best 11 guys out there, and we're going to get them to play, and we're going to get intense, and we're going to get motivated, and we're going to get some things done. Uh, are you at the point where you say, okay, everybody, all positions are open. We're going to find out the best 11 we got, and we're going to go out and go to war? Oh, I don't think that's true in some cases because there's some players that are playing very, very hard, and I appreciate their play. The thing you have to say is, you know, if, I, if you and I are playing the, best, the same position and my performance is below average, when is it that you deserve a chance? And, uh, you know, in some cases, maybe that chance is now. You know, we have to look at... Everything, grade it, look at our players and look at what we're doing and look at our players and get the best people out there with the right situations. Real quickly, some injury difficulties. Steve Morrison played the first half on Saturday, didn't play the second. Is his foot a problem? And uh, Tyrone Wheatley, will he be back? And what about Mark Mealy, who got hurt in Saturday's game? I'd say all three of those are very questionable on the probably no, Jim, on all of them. Uh, Wheatley, I had to see. But Morrison and Mealy are very, very questionable. And... Bobby Powers even got banged up a little bit. And so uh, we have some problems there, but we had to work through those things. There's a lot of excuses in life. The one you want to have is you want to win. And the Wolverines will get back at it next week against Purdue, and we hope you join us right here on Michigan Replay as we take a look back at that game. Is